one cute and small female tarantula needs a bigger house. And you might remember this one from some past videos because this is the tarantula that got almost like a heart shape on its abdomen. So it is it is a super cute little father. <laughs> but before we get her out, let me show you one another thing. Another super cool thing. You see, this <laughs> this is a vampire crab. And even though it looks like the crab is yelling something, this is just the empty shell of the crab. The actual crab actually managed to pull himself outside. You see, this is why the the shell is open. This is not the Come on, camera. This is how they break their shell in order to get outside of their old shell. And just like tarantulas, uh, the crabs, they got the exoskeleton, the, the strong exoskeleton that doesn't grow. So therefore, in order to grow and get bigger, they grow another shell within the old shell. And that new shell is actually bigger, but it is compressed and it is soft. So once they pull themselves outside of the old shell, then that new shell it expands and hardens. So just like the tarantulas, they are super fragile and super vulnerable after the molt. Unfortunately, I didn't. This is the second shell that I found in the in their enclosure, but so far I didn't spot the crab actually molting. And that would be a cool thing to record. Although since they are nocturnal and really they are hiding all the time, I'm not really sure if I will be ever uh, able to spot that. Oh, would you look at that? The female is actually curious. She is wondering where did her roof go and <laughs> is investigating it now. <laughs> but to finish the story in regards to crabs, uh, both of the times I found the molt outside in the water. So I'm not really sure if they actually molted right on that spot where I found the molt or if they actually molted somewhere hidden and then they threw away the mold. I'm not really sure. But maybe sometimes in the future I will be able to spot that. You will definitely know about it. But since this is now second crab that molted, uh, I am uh, safe to say that they are enjoying their enclosure and that the environment is suitable for them because they wouldn't be growing if it isn't. Uh, now Hmm. I think that the girl decided to make another roof since the old roof is gone. You see, she is webbing her her at entrance or exit. I don't know if if she got the dedicated entrance and dedicated exit or <laughs> yeah, who knows. But you see that she is she is really busy now working that booty down there. <laughs> but I'm going to need to pull her outside because in order to rehouse her. We need to get her out, yeah? So hopefully she won't mind that a lot. Catch up, because she can be fast. And let's go. I know that she will hate this, but it needs to be done, of course. Maybe I should just take this substrate out. Mm -hmm. This should make it a bit easier. Mm -hmm. Now, will she start bolting me? Oh, her booty is huge holy holy moly would you look at that and now you see the the hard shape on the abdomen right yeah it is clearly visible i mean it is not the perfect heart but you can see it right <laughs> and thankfully she's being really chill so this gives us opportunity to get a really nice close-up of her uh, it is interesting that the carapace it kind of reminds me of uh, Brachypelma Emilia carapace, right? She also got that triangular shape. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I really didn't expect that she will be this calm and that she will just sit on my hand like this so calmly. So let me give you a couple of interesting facts in regards to this species. This is of course the New World Tarantula and she comes from South America, uh, Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago to be more precise. 
and she was described by the Eugene Simon in way back in 1989. So this species was discovered and described a long, long, long time ago. Although the original scientific name by which it was described was Hapalopus elegans. And then later, in which year? I'm not really sure, but later on it was changed into a, I mean, moved into a different genus, the Cirrocosmos genus. So those are all cool facts. And let's see if she will react to a bit of a booty boop. Boop, boop. No, not really. She's being like super passive, which is interesting. Hmm. I'm going to put her down and then I will snap a couple of high quality pictures. Then we will quickly set up her new enclosure and then of course we are going to move her inside. Come on girl, go down. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now she decides that she needs to bolt. No, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Please girl, I need to take a couple of pictures first. I waited too long, but maybe I'll be lucky. Ah, uh, no, you see she is now being super active. Come on girl, I need you to chill for just another minute. Just one more minute, please. Okay, okay maybe first I can maybe... Oh no. Please girl, just a couple of... <laughs> couple of pictures. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna wait for her to chill down a bit. Okay, I think that I have enough. <laughs> this is actually something that I would like to start doing from now on. Whenever I'm getting some species, some tarantula species outside, I will or I should always try to get a couple of nice pictures because in the future, you know that I have the, the web shop is also a website with the list of all tarantulas and I would like to have a picture, a high quality picture, a detailed picture of every tarantula. Therefore, I definitely need to start with that. All right, now to set up the actual enclosure. And for this species, all that I need is kind of deep uh, enclosure filled with some substrates and there is no need for some height because the tarantula will actually dig and make a height for itself. Just need to compress it real nice and more and more. And as always I provide something like a starter burrow, starter hole you see, so the tarantula got a place to hide as soon as possible and she will have a starting place to start digging of course. Now to get it inside. First go in the cup. <laughs> But she's so cute, look at her go. Pip, 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 pip. Now she can go in her new enclosure. Yes. No. <gasps> Already out. Come on. Go there and stay there. No. <laughs> Did she stop? No, not really. But if you're wondering what is the point of having a tarantula this small, I didn't even, I think I didn't mention. This is actually, a, I believe, an adult tarantula, so she won't get any more big than this. Maybe slightly bigger, uh, I'm not super sure, but I think that this is it. So if you're wondering what is the point of having a tarantula that is actually this small, I mean, when you get a tarantula you are expecting to have a huge spider that you can show off. Well. Yes and no. There is no tarantula that is bigger than this one and that provides uh, this appearance. So she is definitely kind of unique and no, go in. The enclosure, yes. <laughs> also another benefit is you have a small tarantula, therefore this is all that you need to have a tarantula, just some small plastic box and you are set. You don't need to get some expensive glass enclosure, you don't need to have uh, some space for it. Just have a small space on shelf and you can easily own this tarantula. Also there is one other hidden perk of having a, a dwarf tarantula of this size. And it is kind of a secret perk, so uh, don't tell anyone that I told you this, but in case your parents don't allow you to have tarantula or Maybe your partner doesn't want you to have a tarantula or maybe the person that rents you an apartment doesn't allow any pets including tarantulas. You can technically uh, get a tarantula like this one and tell that this is some house spider that you caught and that you just have it in the, in the cup. <laughs> and technically they will never know that you have a tarantula. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, that is a hidden perk of having a, a dwarf tarantula of this size. Now I will close her enclosure and in the background I can hear that Felix is just walking around everywhere. I don't know why is he so active right now, but maybe he's just looking for some attention. So let's give him some attention, shall we? Hey Felix, what is up? <laughs> you wanted to have a camera on you, right? Yeah, I can see it in your look. <laughs> you wanna grab my finger, maybe? Chup. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Once again, outsmarted. <laughs> so also in this video, I want to quickly show you the other Ciriocosmus species that I have. I have two species. One is Ciriocosmus peres milesi. You can see how that one looks. They are kind of similar, but you see that they are different. Their carapace is different. Also their heart shape is a bit bigger, but also kind of pronounced. And the abdomen is kind of similar, I don't know. They actually look a little bit brighter than Cirocosmus elegans. So that is one species that I have. And the other one, mm, I hope that this one will not hide. Although it is not outside, maybe I will be able to lure her out. And that one is called Cirocosmus giganteus. And the reason why they are called uh, like that, you know that giganteus, it is Latin name something like giant, most likely, I assume. So the fun fact about this species is that the actual males from this species are the biggest from all the Cirocosmus genus. So that is why uh, they got the name Giganteus. And they are, they are kind of recently discovered species. Let's see if I can get it on the open. Oh, it actually, oh no. But I guess you could see it briefly. Oh, is it coming outside? Oh, it seems like it. Come on, little buddy, go out and investigate. What was that? Maybe it was a roach that is actually hurt outside. Go, go and check it out. <laughs> uh, but if he doesn't come out, what I have in plan uh, next video, you know, it is a feeding video and I will be feeding all of my dwarf tarantula species. I don't think that I have a lot of them. I will actually need to re-evaluate the list. I'm not really sure which are all the species that are classified as dwarf because there are some bigger dwarfs and some smaller dwarfs. So I will need to check that out, but I will be featuring all of them in a single feeding video. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can see it through the plastic. Yeah, kinda. You see it is similarly looking like the other Cirocosmus. It also got somewhat of a hard shape on the abdomen but if i'm seeing correctly it doesn't have the stripes on the carapace so that is a clearly visible difference from the other Cirocosmus. if that's the case i'm not really sure because uh, we don't have a clear clear sight at her okay okay that is all in regards to tarantulas but before we end the video i have one thing that i want to mention you maybe remember when i mentioned uh, in one of my videos I mentioned Andrew Smith, he is the guy that it's, he is a scientist and he described a bunch of tarantula species that a lot of you are keeping at home and I did a video where I actually showed all the tarantula species that I have that were described by him. Anyhow, he, he is doing uh, tarantula documentaries, like real, real documentaries and he is currently running a campaign on Kickstarter where he is raising funds to finance uh, a new documentary that he plans to do about King Babu tarantula, you know. King Babu, the what is the scientific name? Pel, pel, pelino, Pelinomius muticus. Yes, that's the one. So if you like watching documentaries, like uh, real documentaries made by a real spider a scientist, unlike me, who is just a, a hobbyist and enthusiast, I will link the Kickstarter page in the description so you can go and check it out and see if it is worth supporting, of course. Yeah, that is all that I wanted to say. And that is everything for this video. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I upload every Monday and Fridays. So see you again soon. Bye. -bye.